uh, hear you speak a little bit about, I know it's a big topic, but uh, the U.S. education system, particularly in light of what we're seeing around the country and budget cuts and people willing to let teachers go without a lot of second thought. Well, that's a really important issue. The, uh, the public education system was one of the uh, real uh, major achievements of this country. It was the first country to have a really uh, broad mass education system uh, that contributed enormously, not only to the cultural health of the country, but to its economic growth. Uh, that after the Second World War, uh, there was a the major period of economic growth in U.S. history was the several decades after the Second World War. And a substantial reason for that was uh, the GI Bill, which allowed a huge number of people, not enough unfortunately, but a huge number of people to go to college who would never been able to do it. And in those days, college was cheap. Public education was free. I mean, I went to college in 1945, and I happened to go to the local, I went to the local school, you know, you never went anywhere else, but the local school happened to be the University of Pennsylvania, which, which is private, but it was a hundred dollars, you know, and you could get it, and you could easily get a scholarship. So education was basically free, and for the GI Bill, it's a huge number of people, and that had an enormous impact. Well, all of that's being reversed. There's an attack on public education, which is without any precedent, because all the way from kindergarten up to the universities. So take, say, the universities. Uh, well, I'll just tell you a personal experience. Uh, a couple of months ago, I travel around a lot giving talks. I happened to give a talk at, uh, in Mexico City uh, at the National University. A pretty impressive university, a couple hundred thousand students, very high level. Uh, very engaged. In fact, salaries are ridiculously low by our standards, but they work. The facilities are pretty good. It's free. That's a poor country, you know, but public education is free. And furthermore, in Mexico City itself, there's a city-run college, which is not only free, but has open admissions. So anybody can go, and if they need help to get in, they get remedial training. I was there too, you know, pretty impressive, also high standards. Well, that's a poor country. Uh, I happened to go from there to uh, the Bay Area in California. It's maybe the richest place in the world outside of uh, the Gulf Emirates. Uh, the, uh, the public education system is being systematically destroyed. Uh, tuition is so high in the major universities that it's just for the rich. It's in fact, it's at the level of Ivy League colleges. Uh, more, for this year, for the first time, uh, more funding for the public institutions is coming from tuition than from the state in a rich state, not Mexico. Uh, and this is happening all over the country. I mean, a majority of the states by now, the tuition in the public universities is uh, higher than funding. Now, it's not because of the lack of wealth, and it's not because of the deficit, which is complete farce, as is easily to show. It's because of the decision to destroy public education. The, in California, for example, the, uh, the great universities, which are being, will be pri almost certainly be privatized. They're almost private now. You know, very high tuitions, uh, big endowments, and so on. And that means the rest of the system it gets kind of lowered to uh, low-level technical training. Well, you know, for the economy of, I mean, forget the human cost, for the economy of California, that's very serious. California became rich in large measure because of the uh, high-level education system. Well, the people who are running the program, that top one-tenth of one percent of the population, they don't care. I mean, their kids will be fine. You know, they don't use the public education system. If it's privatized, they can pay for it. They have phenomenal wealth. And there's a change, and this generalizes over the country. We have to recognize a significant change in the nature of contemporary state capitalism from the 70s. Uh, you go back to the 1950s, 
uh, the CEO of a firm, say General Motors, had to care about the future of the firm. Uh, they had to have brand loyalty, uh, you know, uh, the firm had to persist and so on. So they tried to build it so it would persist. That's not true anymore. Uh, the CEO of, say, General Electric, which is mostly a financial institution, all they have to do is make money in the short term. I mean, and then, of course, they get bailed out by the taxpayer if anything goes wrong. But if the company itself declines, it doesn't matter. They walk away with their golden parachute. That's the new system. And as for the country, they don't really care about it. Along with the financialization of uh, the economy came offshoring of production. So if you can make more profit by uh, uh, using uh, super cheap exploited labor in uh, uh, China, let's say, without environmental constraints and so on, fine. It happens to harm this country severely, but that's not their concern. So we're getting into a situation where the future of the country just doesn't matter for the people, for the decision makers. And it's going all the way down to uh, elementary school. I don't have to tell you, there's a huge attack on teachers um, in an effort to try to shift the blame for, for, for the financial crisis and a general economic crisis away from, you know, Goldman Sachs to uh, the public school teachers and the firefighters with their huge pensions. I mean, you know, it's so ludicrous, you can hardly believe that they're getting away with it. And there is a backlash, like in Wisconsin, a significant backlash, but it's certainly going on. And it, it is, uh, so, so you're right, there's a major effort to destroy the public school system. Now, I think there's a fundamental reason behind that. It's not just that the rich don't care. The, I think the same thing lies behind the attack on Social Security. Social Security is a phenomenally successful program, has almost no administrative costs. I mean, far less than privatized insurance and so on. Very cheap, works very well, keeps a lot of people alive. Uh, it doesn't mean much to people in higher income levels, you know, they get a small amount, they can forget it. But for a lot of the population, that's what keeps them surviving, particularly after the, uh, the huge uh, economic collapse, the collapse of the real estate bubble. So, so why attack Social Security? Well, partly it's of no benefit to the rich, but there's a deeper reason, I think, and I think it's the same reason as the public education system. I can't prove it, but this is what it looks like to me. The public education system and Social Security are based on a certain principle, namely the principle that we care about other people. Okay. And that's, so, you know, Social Security means you care that a disabled widow across town doesn't have food to eat. Or let's say I don't have kids in school, but you know I'm happy to pay school taxes because I care that the kid across the street can go to school. And, uh, and this, so this concept of sympathy and social solidarity is considered extremely dangerous. There's a major effort, propaganda effort, to try to drive into people's heads that you should only be concerned for yourself. Now, there's nothing new about this. You go back in America, it's good to learn, know about American history. You go back to, say, 1850, the beginnings of the Industrial Revolution, and incidentally, the period of the freest press in the United States. There are hundreds, thousands of newspapers, with a lot of readership, uh, direct participation. They were written, you know, factory workers and others. And one of the main themes uh, was uh, uh, anger at what was called the new spirit of the age. Uh, gain wealth, forgetting all but self. That was the new spirit of the age in 1850. And there's been a tremendous effort over the years to somehow drive that into people's heads and drive out all normal human feelings. And, you know, it's, uh, it's had some success. And I think you see it in the uh, willingness of parts of the population, at least, to try to kill the elements of the society and the culture that are based on care and concern for other people, and to try to turn people into 
crazed maniacs who care about nothing but themselves. Well, that's all that's pretty dangerous. Again, if it was happening in some small country, you know, it'd be a shame. But when it's happening in the richest, most powerful country in history, it's very dangerous.